guys, it's Katie. Uh, today I'm in my bedroom because I'm planning to read. Um, and my husband has his friend over, but I figured that I would make my video for my November TBR. Uh, so this one's gonna be kind of themed. Basically the books that I'm planning to read, there's four for my Canadian Book Ninjas book club. We're going to be reading the Cupcake series by Bethany Lopez. Uh, they're very short, so it really shouldn't take me that long. I can probably finish two in one day, potentially three. And then other than that, I'm planning to read all of the romance picks for the uh, Goodreads Choice Awards 2020. I either have uh, these books on Kindle Unlimited, um, Apple Books, or, or iBooks, or I bought a physical copy of it. Uh, I only bought one physical copy and the rest are all ebooks. Um, I personally voted for Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting as my add-in choice. Um, if you haven't read this book yet, I highly suggest it. I own the arc of it, and then I also own a physical edition. This book came out in August, and it has 368 pages. I rated it five stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm really hoping that that makes it onto the second round nominees. Um, I'm also interested to see what else will make it onto the list and what will be deleted. So first we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. I've, I've heard really mixed things about this book in general. I've heard it's really boring and then I've also heard that people absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm interested to see how it will go. Uh, it does have a 4.6 star rating on Goodreads. A romance writer who no longer believes in love and a, and a literary writer stuck in a rut engage in a summer-long challenge that may just upend everything they believe about happily ever afters. Augustus Everett is an acc acclaimed author of literary fiction. January Andrews writes best-selling romance. When she pens a happily ever after, he kills off his entire cast. They're polar opposites. In fact, the only thing they have in common is that for the next three months, they're living in neighboring beach houses, broke and bogged down with writer's block. Until one hazy evening, one thing leads to another and they strike a deal destined to force them out of their creative ruts. Augustus will spend the summer writing something happy and January, will pen the next great American novel. She'll take him on field trips worthy of a rom-com montage, and he'll take her to interview surviving members of Blackwood's death cult, obviously. Everyone will finish a book and no one will fall in love, really. So personally, I think it sounds really cute. So I'm excited to read this book. Next we have You Had Me at Ola by Alexa. Alexis Daria. This book has 365 pages. None of these books are relatively short. They're all over 250 pages. So this book has a 3.82 Goodreads rating. Brings reader uh, brings readers an unforgettable hilarious rom-com set in a drama-filled world of telenovas. Perfect for fans of Jane the Virgin and the Chris Clinton. Leading ladies do not end up on tabloid covers. After a messy public breakup, soap opera darling Jasmine Lynn Rodriguez finds her face splashed across the tabloids. When she returns to her hometown in New York City to film the starring role in a bilingual romantic comedy for the number one streaming service in the country, Jasmine figures her new leading lady plan should be easy enough to follow until a casting shakeup pairs her with Telenova hunk Ashton Suarez. Leading ladies don't need a man to be happy. After his last, 
Telenova, char Telenova character was killed off, Ashton is worried his career is dead as well. Joining this new cast as a last minute addition will give him the chance to show off his acting chops to American audiences and ping the radar of Hollywood casting agents. To make it work, he'll need to generate smoking hot on screen, on street, on screen chemistry with Jasmine. Easier said than done, especially when a disastrous first impression smothers the embers of whatever sexual heat they may have had. Leading ladies do not rebound with the new co-stars. With their careers on the line, Jasmine and Ashton agree to rehearse in private, but rehearsal leads to kissing, and kissing leads to behind the scenes romance worthy of a soap opera. While their on-screen performance improves, the media spotlight on Jasmine soon threatens to destroy her new image and expose Ashton's most closely guarded secret. That actually sounds really good. I wasn't sure what any of these books were really about. Um, I mean, I knew what Beach Read was about, but that one actually sounds really good. Uh, next we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer, Jennifer L. Armitrout. This is the book that I ordered physically. I got it from Amazon for like $13. This book has 634 pages in it, so it's a pretty big book. It has a 443 uh, star rating on Goodreads. A maiden chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of maiden is solarity, never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure. Waiting for the day of her ascension, she would rather be with the guards, fighting back the evil that took her family, than preparing to be found worthy by the gods. But the choice has never been hers. A duty the entire kingdom's future rests on Poppy's shoulders, something she's not even quite sure she wants for herself, because a maiden has a heart and a soul and lo longing. And when Hawk, a garden, a golden-eyed guard honor bound to ensure her ascension, enters her life, destiny and duty become tangled with desire and need. He incites her anger makes her question everything she believes in, and tempts her with the forbidden. A kingdom forsaken by the gods and feared by mortals. A fallen kingdom is rising once more, determined to, pick, to take back what they believe is theirs through violence and vengeance. And as the shadow of those cursed draws closer, the line between what is forbidden and what is right becomes blurred. Poppy is not only on the verge of losing her heart, and being found unworthy by the gods, but also her life when every blood-soaked thread that holds her world together begins to unravel. That is a very filled book. It doesn't sound like it's very romance heavy. Uh, it does seem to have romance in it though, so we will see. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that but we'll try. Uh, and then we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Herbert. I haven't read any of this series, so in order to read this book, I have to read uh, the first one, which was Get a Life, Chloe Brown. Uh, so this book has 361 pages, and it has a 4.17 Goodreads rating. Another charming romantic comedy about a young woman who agrees to fake date her friend after a video of him rescuing her from the office building goes viral. Danica Brown knows what she wants, professional success, academic renown, and an occasional roll in the hay to relieve all that career-driven tension. But romance, it's been there, done that, burned that t-shirt. Romantic partners, whatever their gender, are a distraction at best and a drain at worst. So Danny asks the universe for the perfect friend with benefits, someone who knows the score and knows their way around the bedroom. When Broding security guard Jaffer and Suri rescue, rescues Danny from a workplace fire drill gone wrong, it's an obvious sign. PhD student Danny and her ex rugby player Zaf are destined to sleep together. But, but before she can explain that fact, 
a video of a heroic rescue goes viral. Now half the internet is shipping Dr. Rugby and Zaf is beginning, is begging Danny to play along. Turns out his sports charity for kids could really use the publicity. Lying behind the scenes, the trouble is, Grumpy Zaf's secretly a hopeless romantic and he's determined to corrupt Danny's stone cold realism. Before long, he's tackling her fears into the dirt, but the former sports star has issues of his own, and the walls around his heart are as thick as his um, thighs. Suddenly, the easy lay Danny dreamed of is more complex than her thesis. Has her wish backfired? Is her focus being tested? Or is the universe just waiting for her to take a hint? That actually sounds really good. I don't know why I haven't picked up the first book in the series, and now I'm really excited to read it. Okay, so next we have One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This book has 432 pages and it has a 4.05 star rating. Real Love, as seen on TV, Bia Schumacher is a dev stinkly stylish plus size fashion blogger who has amazing friends a devoted family, legions of Insta followers, and a massively broken heart. Like the rest of America, Bay indulges in her weekly obsession, the hit reality show Main Squeeze, the fantasy dates, the kiss-off rejections, the surprising amount of guys named Chad. But Bay is sick and tired of the lack of body diversity on the show. Since when is being a, a size zero a prerequisite for getting engaged on television. Just when Bay has shown off date has sworn off dating altogether, she gets an intriguing call. Main Squeeze wants her to be its next star, surrounded by men vying for her affections. Bay agrees on one condition. Under no circumstances will she actually fall in love. She's in this to supercharge her career, subvert harmful anti fat beauty standards, inspire women across America and get a free hot air balloon ride. That's it. But when the cameras start rolling, Bay realizes things are more complicated than she anticipated. She's in a whirlwind of sumptuous culture, inter internet culture wars, sa sexy sailors, and an opportunity or two or five to find messy real life love in the midst of a made for TV fairy tale. In this joyful razor sharp debut, Bay has to decide whether it might just be worth trusting these men and herself for a chance to live happily ever after. That actually sounds really good too. So far I'm really liking the choices that they have picked. Okay, next we have The Two Lives of Linda Bird by Josie Silver. This book has 369 pages and it has a 3.82 rating. Linda and Freddie, Freddie and Linda, they've been together for more than a decade, and Linda thought their love was indestructible, but she was wrong. On her 28th birthday, Freddie died in a car accident, so now it's just Linda, and all she wants to do is hide indoors and sob until her eyes fall out. But Linda knows that Freddie would want her to try to live life fully, happily, even without him. So enlisting the help of his best friend, Jonah and her sister Elle. She takes her first tentative steps into the world, open to life and perhaps even love again. But then something inexplicable happens that gives her another chance at her old life with Freddie, a life where none of the tragic events of the past few months have happened. Linda is pulled again and again across the doorway of her past, living two lives, impossibly at once. But there's an emotional toll to returning to a world where Freddie, alive, still owns her heart. Because there's someone in her new life, her real life, who wants her to stay. This book sounds interesting, but I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Next, this is probably going to be the last book that I read, just because I do have to read four before it. Uh, and that is Party of Two by Jasmine Gilroy. I haven't read any books in 
this series. Um, I think I own one of them. I just haven't read it yet. Not sure why. Um, this book has 312 pages, so it's not too bad and has a 3.87 star rating. A chance meeting with a handsome stranger turns into a whirlwind affair that gets everyone talking. Dating is the last thing on Olivia Monroe's mind when she moves to LA to start her own law firm. But when she meets a gorgeous man at a hotel bar and they spend the entire night flirting, she discovers too late that he is none other than the hotshot junior senator, Max Powell. Olivia has zero interest in dating a politician, but when a cake arrives at her office with the cutest message, she can't resist. It is chocolate cake after all. Olivia is surprised to find that Max is sweet, funny, and noble, not just some privileged white politician she assumes him to be. Because of Max's high profile job, they start seeing each other secretly, which leads to clandestine dates and silly disguises. But when they finally go public, the intense media scrutiny means people are now digging up her rocky past and criticizing her job, even her suitability as a trophy girlfriend. Olivia knows what she has with Max is something special, but is it strong enough to survive the heat of the spotlight? That actually sounds really good. I've heard really good things about this series. I just, I haven't had time to pick it up. So this is an excuse. Okay, next we have the Happily Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. I have read The Friend Zone. I gave it three to five stars. I didn't personally like it, but I have heard that this book is better than that. So I'm hoping. Uh, this book has 400 pages and it has a 4.2.21 star rating. Two years after losing her fiance, Salone Monroe can't, still can't seem to get her back her life back on track. But one troublemaking pup with a take me home look in its eyes is about to change everything. With her new pet by her side, Sloane finally starts to feel more like herself. Then after weeks of unaxed, unanswered texts, Tucker's owner reaches out. He's a musician on tour in Australia and bottom line, he wants Tucker back. Well, Sloane's not about to give up her dog without a fight. But what if this Jason guy really loves Tucker? As their flirty texts turn into long calls, Sloan can't deny a connection. Jason is hot and nice and funny. There's no telling what could happen when they meet in person. The question is, with his music career on the rise, how long will Jason really stick around? And is it possible for Sloan to survive another heartbreak? From the USA Today bestselling author, The Friend Zone, comes an adorable and fresh romantic comedy about one troublemaking dog who brings together two perfect strangers. So it sounds pretty good. I, I just, I don't know. I really did not like the friend zone. So I'm really hoping that I will like this one, but who knows. Next we have Something to Talk About by Meryl Wilsner. This book has 336 pages and a 3.65 star rating, so that's actually really not very good. A showrunner and her assistant give the world something to talk about when they accidentally fuel a ridiculous rumor in this debut romance. Hollywood powerhouse Joe is, pro is photographed making her assistant Emma laugh on the red carpet. And just like that, the tabloids declare them a couple. The so-called scandal couldn't come at a worse time, threatening Emma's pr promotion and Joe's new movie. As the gossip spreads, it starts to affect all areas of their lives. Paparazzi are following them outside the office, co-workers are treating them differently, and a source is feeding information to the media. But their only comment is no comment. With the launch of Joe's film project fast approaching, the two women begin to spend even more time together, getting along famously. Emma seems to have a sixth sense for knowing what Joe needs, and Joe, known for being aloof and, out, and outwardly cold, opens up to Emma in a way neither of them expects. They begin to realize the rumor might not be so off base after all, but is acting on the spark between them worth fanning the gossip veins? This actually sounds pretty good. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, 
Um, I personally haven't read any female female romances or male male romances. It's not that I'm not open to it, I just haven't really read any. I am interested in reading Him by uh, Serena Bowen. I am interested in reading that one. Um, and I have been watching a couple of videos about other ones. Um, so I'm interested in them, I just haven't read them. Next we have Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Uh, I have read two books by this author and I didn't like either one. So I'm not expecting much from this. Honestly, um, this book has 363 pages, a 4.25 rating novel about family, first love, grief, and betrayal that will touch on the hearts of, mo of both mothers and daughters. Morgan Grant and her 16-year-old daughter, Clara, would like nothing more than to be nothing alike. Morgan is determined to prevent her daughter from making the same mistake she did by getting pregnant and married way too young. Morgan put her own dreams on hold. Clara doesn't want to follow in her mother's footsteps. Her predictable mother doesn't have a spontaneous bone in her body. With warring personalities and conflicting goals, Morgan and Clara find it increasingly difficult to coexist. The only person who can bring peace to the household is Chris, Morgan's husband, Clara's father, and the family anchor. But that peace is shattered when Chris is involved in a tragic and questionable accident. The heartbreaking and long-lasting consequences will reach far beyond just Morgan and Clara. While struggling to build everything that crashed around them, Morgan finds comfort in the last person she expects to, and Clara turns to the only boy she's been forbidden to see. With each passing day, new secrets, resentment, and misunderstandings make mother and daughter fall further apart. So far apart, it might be impossible for them to ever fall back together. Um, so this does not sound like a romance at all. Apparently it is a contemporary romance, but it mostly just sounds like mother-daughter issues. So I really am not understanding why this book is on this list, but sure. So not very excited to read that. I was kind of excited to see Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall on this list because I was interested in it. I just never picked it up. Um, so now I have a reason to, I guess. Uh, so this book has 427 pages and it has a 4.20 star rating. Wanted. One fake boyfriend, practically perfect in every way, Luke O'Donnell is t tangentially and re reluctantly famous. His rock star parents split when he was young and his father, he's never met, spent the next 20 years cruising in and out of rehab. Now that his dad's making a comeback, Luke's back in the public eye, and one compromis compromising photo is enough to ruin everything. To clean up his image, Luke has to find a nice, normal relationship, and Oliver Blackwood is as nice and normal as they come. He's a barrister, an ethical vegetarian, and he's never inspired a moment of scandal in his life. In other words, perfect boyfriend material. Unfortunately, apart from being gay, single, and really really in need of a date for a big event, Luke and Oliver have nothing in common. So they strike a deal to be publicly friendly, fake, boyfriends until the dust has settled. Then they can go their separate ways and, prevent, and pretend it never happened. But the thing about fake dating is that it, it can feel a lot like real dating. And that's when you get used to someone, start falling for them, don't ever want to let them go. So now that I've read the synopsis for it, I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't normally like the fake dating trope, um, but I'm interested to read it, so we'll see. Next we have In Five Years by Rebecca Cyril. I have never heard of this book. Um, it has 272 pages. This is the shortest book that is on this list. And it has 3.87 star rating. Where do you see yourself in five years? When type A Manhattan lawyer Danny Cohen is asked this question, the most important interview of her career, she has a medi culturally crafted answer at the ready. Later, 
After nailing her interview and accepting her boyfriend's marriage proposal, Danny goes to sleep knowing she is right on track to achieve her five-year plan. But when she wakes up, she's suddenly in a different apartment with a different ring on her finger and beside a very different man. The television news is on in the background and she can just make out the scrolling date. It's the same night, December 15, but 2025, five years in the future. After a very intense, shocking hour, Danny wakes again at the brink of midnight back in 2020. She can't shake what has happened. It certainly felt much more than, than merely a dream. But she isn't the kind of person who believes in visions. That nonsense is only charming coming from free-spirited types like, like her lifelong best friend, Bella. Determined to ignore the odd experience, she files it away in the back of her mind. That is, until four and a half years later, when by chance, Danny meets the very same man from a long ago vision. Brimming with joy and heartbreak, in five years is an unforgettable love story that reminds us of the power of loyalty, friendship, and unpredictable nature of destiny. That actually sounds really good. This is the book that I was thinking about starting uh, just because it was the shortest on the list. Uh, so, yeah. I am very intrigued to read The Switch by Beth O. Leary. Leary? Um, I thought this came out earlier than 2020, but I guess not. Um, but I'm really interested to read it. It has 330 pages and it has a 4.11 star rating. Aline, newly single and about to turn 80, would like a second chance at love but her tiny Yorkshire village doesn't offer many eligible gentlemen. When in bustling London, Aline's 20-something overachieving Lena is ordered to take a two-month sabbatical after blowing a big presentation at work. Once Lena learns of Aline's romantic predicament, she proposes a solution, a two-month swap. Aline will live in London and look for love. Meanwhile, Lena, Lena will rest and take care of things in rural Yorkshire. But trading places isn't as easy as either of them expected. Will swapping lives help Alin and Lena find themselves, or maybe even find love? Uh, so this sounds nothing like what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I can't even tell you what I thought it was going to be, but that was not it. So I really don't know how I feel about that story. Huh. Okay, next we have A Rogue of One's Own by E.B. Dunmore. Again, I haven't read the first book in the series, um, so I'm going to have to do that. This book has 448 pages and it has a 4.09 rating. A lady must have money and an army of her own if she is to win a revolution. But first, she must pit her wits against the wills of an irresistible rogue bent on breaking her plans and her heart. Lady Lucy is fuming. She and her band of Oxford suffragettes have finally scraped together enough capital to control one of London's, London's major publishing houses with one purpose, to use it as a coup against Parliament. But who could have predicted that one person standing between her and success is the old nemesis, Lord Ballantyne? or that he would be willing to hand over the reins for an outrageous price, a night in her bed. Lucy tempts Tristan like no other woman, burning him up with the fierceness and determination every time they clash. But as their battle of wills and words form the fans of long smothered devotion, the silver-tongued seducer runs the risk of becoming caught in his own snare. As Lucy tries to outmaneuver Tristan in the boardroom and the bedchamber, she soon discovers there's truth in what the poets say. All is fair in love and war. So I think the reason that I didn't read the first book before was because it was a historical. Historical and me don't really tend to get along. Um, there was one historical that I liked. That was The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. But that wasn't really like a historical romance. I mean, kind of, but... This sounds more 
I like, I don't know, maybe I'll like it. Who knows? A lot of people did, so it's very possible. And lastly, we have In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Um, this book has 336 pages and has a 3.94 star rating. Honestly, this is one of the books that I'm least excited for on this list. I used to love Christina Lauren, and then I didn't like Twice in the Blue Moon. I didn't like The Honey Don't List. Like, I haven't liked any of their newer books, so I don't think that I like the way that they're going. Um, but we'll see. So, One Christmas Wish two brothers, and a lifetime of hope are on the line for hapless Maylene Jones in In Holidays. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but not for Maylene Jones. She's living with her parents, hates her going nowhere job, and has just made a romantic error of epic proportions. But perhaps worst of all, this is the last Christmas May will be in her favorite place of the world. The snowy Utah cabin where she and her family have spent every holiday since she was born, along with two other beloved families. Mentally melting down as she drives away from the cabin for the final time, May throws out what she thinks is a simple plea to the universe. Please, show me what will make me happy. The next thing she knows, tires screech and metal collides, everything goes black. But when May gasps awake, she is on an airplane bound to Utah where she begins the same holiday all over again, with one hilarious disaster after another sending her back to the plane. May must figure out how to break free of the strange time loop and finally get her love, her true love under the mistletoe. So that actually sounds pretty good. So I'm hoping that they kind of went back to their old writing style, um, because if they did, then I will be over the moon happy with that book. Um, but those are the Goodreads Choice Awards nominees. Um, I am planning to read them all and I will tell you guys what I think. Um, interested to see how the next set will go, um, but we'll see.